Hello, I'm OBX Toy Cat, and welcome back to another Top 5 video. Today, I have one of the most requested Top 5s on my channel, and that's one that confused me for the longest time, because I thought I'd already made a Top 5 Best Enchantments video. But as it turns out, I have not, so today I'm going to be making that video, but with a small twist, because today I'm going to be showing you the Top 5 Most Underrated Enchantments in Minecraft. There's a lot of enchantments that people hear about the first time, then think, eh, that's not so great, and kind of ignore the whole time after that, but today, I'm hopefully going to be changing your mind about a few enchantments, and maybe opening your whole mind to a world of enchantments. Enchantments, or maybe uh, just teaching you some new things about enchantments you already knew about. Either way, please do like though if you do like it, it helps out the channel a lot and lets me know you do like this sort of stuff and want to see more. And let's get straight into the video then, shall we? We have number five, which is going to have to be a pickaxe, a shovel, and axe enchantment, or a tool enchantment, and that is silk touch. And this is because most people, uh, they use it, you know, because they want to collect ores and then they turn into fortune. And a lot of builders don't realize that this is one of the most handy things you can have if you want more building blocks, because as well as giving you access to diamond door, emerald door, you know, all the ores that you wouldn't other otherwise be able to actually have in survival. You also have access to a few other blocks you can't otherwise get, including the ice block, including the mycelium block from mushroom biomes, the grass block, if you want to like make a big dirt plane turn into uh, you know grass lots faster, you can use this, or you can use it selectively in your way, you can do a bunch of cool things with that, uh, you've also got access to the mushroom block, this is a block so secret, which uh, that even if you're um, even if you're in creative, you need to use Silk Touch to get it. So that's why, uh, you know, this is so cool. You get access to four more blocks you wouldn't otherwise have access to, plus all of the ores. That's why Silk Touch is awesome. But on top of that, you can also break glass without, you know, just breaking it forever. You can break uh, glowstone and actually get a glowstone block rather than having to turn it into glowstone from the stuff. And you can also get melon blocks rather than melons, which is so handy if you're building with melon stuff. And finally, you know, just for the last couple of uses, if you really wanted gravel, which of course no one ever does, you can get uh, gravel 100% of the time with Silk Touch. So if you want to make sure you get all the gravel possibly, again, which no one ever wants to, that's something you can do. Just figured I'd mention it in case there's the one gravel enthusiast out there. Uh, but yeah, let's move on to the next um, one, which is actually going to be a bow enchantment. Because a lot of people, when you're going for bow enchantments, you figure, okay, then uh, I guess I'll go with power or infinity. Infinity's cool because it's like, ooh, no arrows ever. And power's cool because it can increase the damage pretty significantly. But the thing about, uh, you know, uh, arrow damage is a lot of people, if they have armor on, that can soak up a lot of the damage from arrows. But the thing about flame which is the number four enchantment, is if you fire, uh, I'll show you myself here, I've got full diamond armor, but the thing about flame is it hits right through armor. Flame damage and poison damage go, both go straight through armor, which means that even though I can have protection for armor and be pretty much invincible, I'm still going to die to a few well-placed flame shots, and that's the cleverness of it. This can, you know, it's, this is basically armor-ignoring shots, and it's also a great way just to scare them off. When you're on fire, you're like, oh no, I'm going to die, and you might start running away, and that's when it's the perfect time to strike. Even if they do start charging after all the flame arrows, so I'll keep, uh, you know, even if, you know, Steve keeps charging at me after all the flame arrows, I can still then go in for the charge, he'll be on way less health, and then the odds are way better. So, that's why flame is awesome, because it kind of complements the rest of your setup, rather than just being a thing by itself, and uh, yeah, flame bow is awesome, but it's also awesome for a second reason, which is a little bit more obscure than the first one, but let's say you invite your friend Steve. By the way, do you like how realistic he looks? Look, look at the arms there. They're pretty great. But yeah, I invite my friend Steve and I'm like, oh, stand over there. We're going to have a fight, yeah? And, you know, you make like an arena or something. If you're smart enough and you can place TNT in just the right place above him where he can't see it, but it can still hear him, what you can do is you can make it so if you fire at the TNT, I'm scared I'm going to miss now. I did miss. Uh, but if you fire at the TNT and you hit it, as you can see, not only will the flame arrow hit him, or hit somewhere near him, but the TNT will land right on him, and you can make it. So, of course, there's no more Steve. He's gone now. So, yeah, if you want to kill your friends in a very spectacularly interesting way, then you can use uh, the flame bow. And it's just awesome for remote TNT detonations. That's something uh, a lot of people can't do with that stuff. So, yeah, that is going to have to be uh, the fourth best enchantment. Let's move on to number three, which is actually a helmet enchantment, which is respiration. So, respiration allows you to breathe underwater for much, much longer. It's almost ten times um, more uh, you know, underwater time, which which is pretty cool, of course, and, you know, this is cool just for un uh, exploring underwater caves, never having to worry about your water meter again, but it also has a use in PvP combat, so let's say Steve was still over there, I mean, he's obviously gone forever now, but let's say Steve was chasing off me, and it's like, oh no, he's, he's, he's gonna get me, uh, one way you can even the playing field, if you know he's gonna kill you in a head-to-head -head fight, and you can't just keep running, because you know he'll catch you, is if you go underwater, and you lure him away smart enough, if you've got like an underwater uh, ca uh, cavern like this, or something like this, if you just wait under here long enough, he'll come in here after you, 
And as soon as you, uh, as soon as your first bubble goes down, uh, if he's like in the same time as water you, that's when you know he's uh, past the point of no return. And if he's trapped here, he'll start turning around, being like, "Oh no, I need to get back to water." And that's when you can attack. If you get people on the retreat, that's the easiest way to kill them because people who are attacking you have a decent chance of killing you. People who are running away because they know they'll die otherwise will run away, and they're even going to die from your sword or they'll drown to death. And it's a pretty hilarious way to get a kill. It's kind of challenging to pull off. You do need to have a like, a, you know, a lot of setup for this. But killing people with drowning is one of the best ways to kill people. So that's where respiration's awesome. You can use it to drown your enemies or just use it for your own mining needs. It's It's got kind of both of them in there. Anyway, let's move into number two, which is one that a lot of people will use but won't use as much as they probably should. And that's uh, going to have to be protection. So uh, all the other types of protection, blast protection, uh, uh, projectile protection and uh, flame protection they're a little bit questionable but when it comes to protection this will actually um, if you have it on all four pieces of your armor it will reduce the damage taken by another four fifths so basically your diamond armor if you already have it will reduce your damage taken from let's say 10 hearts to 2 hearts it's a, it's a flat 80% removal which is already amazing that's a lot of removal but then if you enchant all of that with protection 4 which is the highest level of protection, you can reduce that by another 80% down to, you know, only 4% of the original damage. So if you were to take, you know, say 20 hearts of damage, you'd take 4% of that instead, which is 0.8 hearts, I believe. Uh, so basically, you know, it's something that would double overkill some of our armor will just be a glancing hit to you. It won't even notice. And the cool thing about this is a lot of people assume the sword is so much more important than the uh, armor. But, um, you know, as a fun little fact, if you had uh, the choice between Sharpness 5 Sword and uh, Protection 4 all Armor, always pick the armor because the Sharpness 5 Sword will just about double your damage, but the protection for armor will, you know, five times your protection, which means that even if you had a stone sword to their enchanted diamond sword and their diamond armor, your diamond armor protection would mean you would, you'd, you'd have better odds going into that fight, which is just kind of crazy if you think about it, uh, that you, you know, you can make that big a sacrifice. So yeah, always go protection for armor. It's got some amazing benefits when you get the full set, and it basically makes you immune to any non-fire, non-lava, non-poison damage, which is, of course, pretty cool. But that's where, you know, the flame arrow comes in, and that's why the these two things are both pretty awesome. If they don't know uh, just how uh, you know awesome protection is, then you don't have to worry about things. And if they do know, you can use your flame arrows and do that. But let's move on to number one now, shall we? Uh, which is one that a lot of people you know have recently started knowing about, the Wither. But it's actually one that was written off for the longest time before that, and that is Smite. So. Smite, if you don't know, it's like sharpness, but it only works against uh, undead creatures. So right now, that is uh, skeletons, wither skeletons, the wither, and zombies. I'm probably missing one, but it's, you know, undead mobs, basically. Zombie pigmen, too. And the thing about it is a lot of people assume, oh, why would I want sharpness that only works on some mobs? And although that might seem like the case, this is actually double as effective as sharpness against those mobs. So although this is mostly a single player thing, if you're going to uh, be fighting those mobs, switch, uh, have a sharpness sword for in general, but then switch out to your smite sword and then you can do some crazy stuff. Examples, uh, you can kill the wither much faster than you could otherwise. I've killed the wither in uh, literally five seconds before using a decent smite and shaman. Uh, you can also kill a skeleton in one hit. Uh, if you jump hit, you can kill a zombie in one hit. And you can also kill a wither skeleton in just one hit. Skeletons and wither skeletons both die in one hit to this, which is just so insanely cr- Oh, wait, this one's got armor, so that's not fair uh, in comparison. But even if with armor... One hit with, uh, you know, the jump and the critical hit. It's crazy just how well you can do with a smite sword. If you're fighting, you know, the undead mobs, always use a smite sword because it gives you a massive advantage. If you're hunting with skeleton skulls, use the smite sword. If you're killing the wither, use the smite sword. And if you're just really annoyed by skeletons, kill them in one hit with a smite sword. And that is going to be my recommendation for the most underrated enchantment because a lot of people just don't appreciate that this does a whole 20 hearts of damage to any uh, undead creature, which is just so much. Or Sorry, yeah, 20 points of damage or, you know, 10 hearts, which is, you know, one hit kill for a lot of stuff it's crazy 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 stuff anyway i hope you did enjoy the video if you did like it please do like it and let me know share it if you really liked it and subscribe if you're new around here i make videos like this every single day on my ch channel and if subscribed you'll see them daily on your homepage. thank you all for watching and i'll see you all in the next video bye